Hi, it's Barb from Coach House Designs. Are you tired of drawing diagonal lines when you're sewing angles on blocks? Well, there's a way that you can avoid it. You may not be absolutely 100% accurate as you are as when you draw a diagonal line with a pen, but it's pretty darn close and it's gonna save you a lot of time. Okay, I'm sitting at my sewing machine. I happen to have a wonderful koala cabinet, which I broke down and bought for myself a couple years ago. Um, but if you don't, this piece here that surrounds the sewing machine would be your table that comes with your sewing machine. So um, if you have a table and not something like this that sits into, this is what the area that you would be working with. Okay, so I've cut myself a piece of painter's tape. This is a pretty wide piece. Um, it's just what I had on hand. It doesn't have to be this wide. And I'm going to place it right here so that I am able to draw a line that lines up with the needle on my machine. And I can draw it as, as far as the tape goes. So I'm gonna place it just so it's on the throat plate, um, but then I'm still able to see my measurements for my um, lines here. So this is quarter eight, uh, sort of quarter inch, half inch, five eighths. So I'm just gonna push it down like this so that it comes right to the edge of my table, which will maximize the length of the um, line that I'm able to draw. I've chosen painter's tape because it doesn't permanently stick to the surface and if I ever want to pull it off it comes off without leaving a bunch of residue behind. I know it sort of doesn't feel right to be putting tape on your machine or on your cabinet but the time saving that you are able to achieve by doing this will make it worthwhile. Okay so I've got this uh, one inch ruler and what I want to do is I want to line it up with the hole in my throat plate. So it's just right directly below my needle. Um, and then I am going to take a permanent marker and draw a line along the edge of my ruler. And then come down here further, right to the edge of my table. And it just has a little jog there because of the difference in heights between my tape, my um, piece that surrounds my machine and my machine. So I'm just going to straighten that line out a little bit. Okay, so now this is the line that is going to be my reference line for when I'm sewing my diagonal lines. Now, as you can see, the tape crosses over. Uh, the plate, the edge of the sewing machine, and this piece here that sits around my machine. So I'm just gonna take my seam ripper and break the tape so that when I need to, I can get those pieces off. If I have to change, you know, get under here because there's a problem with the thread caught up at the bottom or when I change my sewing machine out, I remove this piece of, of the furniture. So that way it will come off easily and I'll just stick it down. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a one and a half inch square. Now, one of the patterns that I've referenced this video to has 800 one and a half inch squares and that's a lot of diagonal lines to draw. So. If you do this, then you won't need to draw any of those lines. So I'm going to place the point of the square right underneath my needle. And then I'm going to line up the other point of the square with the line that I drew. And I'm just going to sew. And as I'm sewing, I'm keeping that line. lined up with the point of the square. So now, oh, it looks funny because I've got the tail in there. So I'll grab that out so you can see the stitching better. So now I've got a straight diagonal line from one end to the other and I didn't have to draw any lines, which 
as you know, can save you hours if you've got a quilt with a lot of diagonal stitching in it. Now, here is a larger square. I believe this one is three and seven eighths. So again, line up your needle with the point. And that's why you wanna have a piece, your, your tape go further because the bigger your square is, the bigger you need, or the longer you need to have this line so that you can have a, a reference point to start sewing. So I'm gonna just sew along here, keeping that point lined up with the line on my, on my table. And then there we go again, perfect diagonal line, no drawing lines. Now, if you are doing binding, it calls for diagonal piecing of the binding uh, lengths. So what I like to do is have my bottom piece extend just a little bit longer beyond the top piece so that I have a very accurate starting point to place my needle. And then I line up this edge, the top, the bottom corner of the top fabric with the line. And there we go, and now I've got my, my binding join. So obviously if I was making binding, this piece would be a lot longer, um, but it uh, just gives you an idea of what it will look like. And now I have another piece here. So quite often in my patterns, I'll have a diagonal join Say to make a tree. So if this was the uh, tree fabric and this is the background fabric, rather than doing a corner square, which I used to do in my patterns, I would put a corner square on the edge of the tree fabric and then add on the rectangle to the side of that. Now I just have it all done with one piece because it's faster. And I'll say in my patterns, draw, place the piece on top of the bottom fabric. So this is the background fabric on the top and the tree fabric on the bottom. And I'll say to draw a diagonal line from the top left-hand corner to a spot two and a half inches down the right side of the background fabric. So that it'll go from here, oops, sorry, from here down to here. Now, again, that can be tedious when you have a lot to do. So. Rather than moving that fabric over a little bit here to give that extra edge like I, I do for binding, I can't do that when I've got cut size pieces because I need the piece to be exactly as cut in the instructions. So what you can do is you make move over the top fabric so you can see where it crosses the bottom fabric. And rather than using a um, permanent marker, which is this Micron pen. I'm going to use this Flexion pen, uh, which is made, or sorry, Frixion pen, pardon me. And it is made by Pilot, and it is a non-permanent pen. So I'm going to just make a, a little mark right there on the top fabric where it crosses with the bottom fabric. And then I can move my top piece back over so I can't see the bottom fabric anymore. And again, start at the top corner. And then that mark that I have on the top fabric is what I'm gonna line up with the line on my tape. There we go. And there will be the seam all perfectly uh, lined up. So. If you are concerned with absolute perfection, you may want to continue drawing lines, but if you want a little time-saving technique, which is 99% accurate, then I would recommend using the tape on your machine and using that line as a guide, and so you don't have to draw any more lines anymore.